In the late 16th century, about a half a century before Descartes, Giordano Bruno, an excommunicated Dominican monk, set himself up as Aristotle's nemesis by developing a completely revolutionary cosmological system. For nearly two millennium, the Western world, and for the most part this meant Christendom, had adhered to Aristotle's geocentric model of the cosmos. The Earth, and therefore humankind, was positioned at the center of the universe, a picture well suited to church doctrine about the relationship between nature, humanity, and God. Copernicus, a generation or so before Bruno, had shocked the church establishment by challenging Aristotle's cosmological model and by proposing a heliocentric cosmology. But Bruno was even more radical and declared that not even the sun was the center of the universe. There is no center, he declared. The universe is acentric. Copernicus gained a place in history by removing humanity from the center of the universe. But it was Bruno, a comparatively unsung hero, who effectively removed the anthropocentric illusion that humanity was even remotely in a position of cosmic centrality or special importance. For his outrageous defiance of church authority, Bruno was unceremoniously marched half naked to the stake and burned alive in Rome, February 17, 1600. Although Bruno's insistence on the truth of his eccentric cosmology was most likely the main reason for the church's extreme ire, he also proposed a concept of matter that was equally revolutionary and equally subversive of church authority. Bruno challenged the old dualism of matter and spirit by proposing a thoroughly monistic view of the cosmos, a world composed of intelligent matter, which he called matter materia. Bruno wanted to overthrow Aristotle's view of matter as passive and inert and declared instead that matter was intrinsically active and self-informing. Bruno's intelligent materialism is radically at odds, not only with medieval religious opinion, but also contradicts the dominant modern scientific conception of dead matter. In Bruno's cosmology, we discover a radical materialism in which intelligence, mind, or consciousness is a necessary and intrinsic essence of nature. His cosmology has an intrinsic place for mind, not mind conceived as an emergent epiphenomenon, mind out of matter, but mind within matter. Had Bruno lived, and had his work not been placed on the index of forbidden books, his radical view of nature and the relationship of matter and mind might well have established a very different philosophical foundation for the development of modern science. Instead, we got Descartes and his dualism of spirits, spiritual soul, and mechanical matter, an ontological split which continues to have profound, often pathological consequences.